symposium on women's health issues is being held in Montreal at the end of this week. Physicians and medical e health experts will meet to discuss the newest research and trends on a variety of topics. One of these topics is breastfeeding. Joining me now is Dr. Judy Hagshi. She's a family physician at the Jewish General Hospital. Good morning to you. Good morning. Now this is a very interesting forum. Why is breastfeeding one of the highlighted topics? Breastfeeding is the highlighted topic, or one of the highlighted topics, because it is so essential to the health of newborns, and it can actually have impacts for the mother and the child for the child's entire life. There are some studies that show that certain chronic and acute diseases are actually diminished when women breastfeed oh, for a significant okay. period of time. That's right. We've been hearing more and more medical reports that more women are turning to back to breastfeeding and returning back to that traditional way of feeding. Yes, absolutely. Breast is best, and women are finally getting that message. Yes. In Montreal, the initiation rate, which is the number of women who actually begin breastfeeding while they're still in hospital, mm -hmm. is over 80%. And we've improved significantly over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now, our problem is that women sort of, uh, once they leave the hospital, they don't have the support that they need in order to continue breastfeeding, in order to feel like they are, they know what they're doing, to deal with any issues and any problems. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do now is encourage women to breastfeed exclusively to six months. Okay. Exclusively means not introducing formula, mm -hmm. or maybe the really odd formula, but more importantly, not even introducing any solid food until the child is six months mm -hmm. old. When I was reading my research, I, what was interesting to me is it's not only the women, the new mothers, who need the support, but also the physicians and those in the medical community who might not be up to speed on the latest on breastfeeding. Is that true? You're absolutely right, which is why we're having this symposium and we're discussing breastfeeding at a conference when there are going to be actually a lot of obstetricians mm -hmm. and nurses who aren't necessarily, you don't expect an obstetrician to deal with a breastfeeding baby. That's right. But if the, if the obstetrician encourages the woman and the pediatrician encourages the woman and any nurse they see encourages the woman and she gets the same message from a lot of different angles, she's much more likely to actually continue to breastfeed, hopefully exclusively to six months and then beyond. The Can Canadian Pediatric Society suggests that women can continue breastfeeding until, or, or encourages them, not mm -hmm. just suggests, encourages them to continue breastfeeding until two years and beyond. Wow, okay. So what are some of the myths surrounding breastfeeding? Well, one of the biggest myths is that it's supposed to hurt. It's not. It's not painful. It's not supposed to be painful, and if it's pain, it's, if it's painful, there's something wrong. It's not being done correctly. Exactly. Now, okay. I'm not saying that I'm blaming the mother, that she's not doing something right. correctly. I'm actually blaming the baby. The baby is not latch, latching on well, and mm -hmm. the latch is the way that the baby attaches to the breast, and not just to the nipple, but to the breast, because it is, after all, called breastfeeding. That's right. So there's hopefully, a, well, there are many more resources that women can now access. For example, we have the Goldfarb Breastfeeding Clinic at the Jewish General Hospital. Mm -hmm. There's m many organizations such as the La Leche League. There are lots of private lactation consultants okay. who some people think, well, maybe that's too expensive, but it's not expensive if you consider the cost of formula. Formula right. is significantly more expensive. And over time, it really adds up. And this really benefits the health of your baby in the long run, and that's an investment that maybe mothers might want to consider. Absolutely. And it, it affects the baby's health in the short run in that it's going to help with to decrease the uh, infections, decrease mm -hmm. diarrheal, diarrheal diseases. Mm -hmm. And then in the long run, studies show it may even have an effect to decrease things like celiac disease and diabetes. So you're really giving your, your right. child a wonderful gift from you're an early age. You're building a foundation for good health. Absolutely. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Hagshi, and uh, good luck with your symposium. Sounds thank very you. interesting. Thank you. We're going to say good morning to Leslie Robinson now. She's got the morning weather forecast for us, and it's looking pretty good. Good morning to you. Good morning. Yes, uh, Guillory, it's uh, looking good temperature-wise for uh, today, but uh, it's going to drop down to a uh, pretty cold evening uh, tonight. We're sitting at a 4 in Montreal right now, and there are some showers in the forecast. That should taper off by uh, early uh, this morning, and then we'll get some sunshine with a little bit of cloud. I do want to tell you that in Sherbrooke, they have 6 in Quebec City, 3. That's the high for today because temperature will fall to zero and minus two.